it's a weird question, but I wanted to ask you if you were, if you were ever a spy. I really want to make this video because I'm 21 and I still have no idea what my dad does. And the things I do know about him make no sense. My dad is the first Soviet born to be a captain in the US Navy. So people always thought that he was a spy and I never really got a chance to ask him because he was constantly working overseas. A few years ago he retired, so I thought I'd finally have a chance to ask my dad because he'd be around more often. The only problem is he's still constantly traveling. Like right now he's in Ukraine, which is a country that's in the middle of a huge war with Russia. Why he's in Ukraine, I have no idea. So right now I'm gonna drive to my parents' house and see if I can find anything that gives me more information about my dad. Okay, so there are a few reasons I think my dad is a spy. Reason number one, the basement. So not only was my dad born in Russia, he also has a, a communist dungeon. I mean, this place is crazy. I don't know where he got this stuff or why he collects it, but a lot of it is Soviet things. There's Lenin's head, just a massive statue of Lenin's head. I mean, this is a portrait of, of, of Stalin. Why would he have a portrait of Stalin? There's different mannequins and, and so many guns and swords, but it's a lot of communistic propaganda. Flags, different writings on the wall. He literally has KGB books. He has an entire shelf of Russian books, Russian literature, Russian history, Russian spy books. Okay, he also has an office down here that's just basically full of more Lenin heads for some reason and Stalin and just dictators. I honestly don't know what any of this stuff is and I have no idea why a US soldier and someone who considers themselves an American would have so many Soviet and communist things in their basement. Reason number two, his LinkedIn. So his resume starts out making sense. He went to Temple University and got a Bachelor of Pharmacy and then started doing pharmacy in the military. But here's where things start getting weird. In 1992, he becomes an investigator for POW MIA Commission. In 1997, becomes a Mission Commander of Defense Threat Reduction Agency where he deals with nuclear missiles, then starts working for NATO, becomes Chief of Staff of NATO in Moscow, Russia, and currently is a CEO of Fort Seal, which is a computer and network security company. It gets weirder though. He has three recommendations on his LinkedIn and they're all from Russians. Leonard Tertolitsky, Alexander Bierman, Andrei Baikov. Andrei Baikov writes, he is a really good guy. Reason number three, my dad got kicked out of Russia. Twice. I don't know why my dad got kicked out of Russia. The first time he got kicked out, me, my mom, and my sister stayed in Russia and lived without him for seven years. The second time he got kicked out, the embassy told all of us to leave. The only information I have is this plaque I found in the basement. This was given to him when he was kicked out of Russia in 2001, and it says, for activities incompatible with his diplomatic status. Reason number four, mystery trips to Ukraine. My dad randomly goes to Ukraine every few months. He never tells me when he's going or why. I feel like my mom probably has to know some more details because he leaves her so much, he's gotta give her some sort of information. Hello? Hey, I just have a quick question for you. Do you have a sec? Yeah, I have a sec, what's up? I wanted to know why does dad always go to Ukraine? Yeah, he does good business in Ukraine. What, do you, what kind of business? Well, he's got some interest there. Okay, sweetie, I gotta go. I love you, bye. My dad just came home, so I'm just gonna go ask him. Um, I have a camera, is it cool if I interview you real quick? What, now? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to ask you, it's a weird question, but I wanted to ask you if you were, if you were ever a spy. Well, I, I guess it all depends what you're calling a spy, or what, what do you mean by a spy? Russians thought I was a spy, but then in America a lot of people call me a spy, and I had an ID card from NATO. My military ID said 007. <laughs> yeah. Your your ID said that you were 007. Correct. But you're saying you weren't? I'm not saying anything. I don't know. You didn't tell me what you think the spy is. When I looked at your LinkedIn, though, your career made, like, no sense. What don't you understand? You never did pharmacy. I did a little bit. Not very well, but I did it. When you were in Russia, what? why did they think you were a spy? Well, because, you know, 
I speak Russian without an accent. I grew up in the streets of Moscow. I could get lost there very quickly. If I don't shave for a day, have a few vodkas, I'm just like as Russian as anyone else. How come your basement looks like you're a fan of communism? You want to keep your friends close, but you want to keep your enemy even closer. So you know who they are. You know how they think. That's why a lot of people would mistake me for a Russian because I was uh, so much into it. As a matter of fact, I had a boss one time at the State Department, a diplomat, she actually for 10 years thought I was in the Russian Navy rather than the United States Navy, and this is our diplomats. So if you have this massive connection to Russia, why do you always go to Ukraine then if you're retired? Do you really want to know? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. All right, I tell you what, you can go with me this time. You want me to come with you to Ukraine? Yeah. But it, Ukraine's in the middle of a war, and I'm not like trained like you are in the military. I don't know if I can go to Ukraine. You'll be okay. Let's go. So they're, uh, they're not letting us out because of my equipment. They want to know exactly what I'm filming before they let me enter the country. My dad talked to them for a little bit. I don't know what he said, but we got out. I'm in Ukraine. <laughs> this is crazy. We got picked up by another black van. This one had a naked man in it for some reason. And we started to drive. We stopped for a bathroom break, and I discovered the real Squatty Potty. When I went outside, I noticed my dad met up with a random dude and gave him a bag. We then went to a military restaurant that looked just like my dad's basement. And my dad met up with more people. And that's when I realized my dad comes to Ukraine to drink. That can't be it. We got back in the van and the naked man was still there. I started to get pretty nervous because we were driving for a really long time and no longer on a road. It was very bumpy. The place we're staying at is hidden behind bushes. All right, so we're at the location. Is this where we're staying? Yeah. Can I just walk in? Yeah, let's go. All right. This place was beautiful. Oh, and the Wi-Fi was Internet 007. Here's a bedroom. You can stay in this bedroom or the next one. There's like four or five bedrooms. Do you have another family here? No. My dad showed me the rest of the house. There was a pool, spa, gym area. He then showed me some sort of torture chamber. Guys, I honestly have no idea how my dad has access to this place. This is literally a James Bond house. And my dad disappeared. I don't even know how to get back. I'm gonna go find my dad, chill here, and my dad said tomorrow he's gonna take me to a secret place and show me what he really does in Ukraine. Surprise, we arrived at another random abandoned, I just wanna know what my dad does. He told me to follow him, so I did. Почему Путин и э, Россия это те, э, те объекты, на которые сейчас важно обратить внимание Вашингтону и Пентагону? Потому что он обманывает все время, он не уважает никакие международные договоры, он совершает, ну, говорит своим словам террористические акты. I think my dad's famous in Ukraine. С крокодилами с некоторыми договариваться не надо. Крокодилов mm -hmm. надо сразу Но топить проблема, в этом же видим, болоте. Что, а Путин хочет удержаться у власти как можно дольше. Для этого ему нужна война. And he's famous for speaking out against Putin. You just go on live television and talk, uh, speak out against Putin. Yes, that's what I do. Why do you do that? Well, because uh, I can't uh, really fight any longer as I used to, but at least I can deliver to people information that they need to know. You've seen me handing over a bag. Actually, it was some medicine for the soldiers who were wounded. Soldiers that I meet in the restaurants and I talk to them and actually try to find out what's going on. You've seen them hosting us in a lavish house and it's all because they want to show appreciation. It means a lot for a small country like Ukraine who is facing such a large uh, enemy like Russia to realize that the United States is with Ukraine, not Russia, in this conflict. Why are they at war? 
Well, uh, Ukraine wanted uh, to be independent, wanted to join the rest of the world. Russia betrayed them and stuck a knife in their back and annexed a large part of Ukraine and attacked Ukraine from the other side when Ukrainians didn't expect it. So young kids like you, you know, they, they revolted and many of them got killed there, got really murdered because they voluntarily went to defend uh, their uh, country. There's a lot of stuff on the news about Putin killing people who kind of go against him. Isn't it dangerous to speak out against him? We can't allow people like Putin intimidate the rest of the world. This war already created over 20 million refugees and thousands of people killed. This KGB thug Putin needs to be stopped before it gets any worse. So I just finished editing the video and I just wanted to say when I started this whole thing out I had no clue why my dad was constantly gone. Turns out he's literally risking his life every day because he wants to support something he's passionate about. Now I still don't know if my dad's a spy but none of that matters to me because what I do know is that he's a badass.